Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is the wonderful morning that the Lord has made. Nice, shiny, warm morning. The light of the world is watching over us today. Hallelujah. You know, it's very evident, wow, in this time we're in. The Lord is making very evident the wheat from the tares. Now he says in the end times he's going to separate. And he is definitely doing that in this hour. You know, sometimes there is... The tares can seem so much like the wheat that it's very hard to tell sometimes. But over time, you can tell. And you can sense things in the Spirit. You know, this devotional today is by T. Austin Sparks. It is the wheat and the tares. Listen real close because there's such a mixture in this hour and some people don't even notice the mixture they're so used to being in the mixture they don't know what the mixture is they're not discerning between the wheat and the tares but it's very important that we do discern between the wheat and the tares because we are coming into the time when the Lord is separating. You know, when you look at a wheat field and you see the wheat and then you see that growing up, the tear growing up there with it, it's dark. It kind of stands out from the wheat. It's different. It can be up there and, and look the same and then it's it looks different. You know there's something not right about it. You know that it's really not part of the wheat after all. Children of the kingdom are sown in the earth. And then by night the enemy comes and sows his own children, children of his kingdom. They are the children of the devil. His method is suitable to his object. His object being completely to nullify what is of God. His method is to imitate it. Did you hear? His object being completely to nullify what is of God. His method is to imitate it. We have a lot of imitators in this hour. But see the deal of it is. That sooner or later, the tear is going to be known to be what it is, a tear. It can't play the game forever. It can't put on the show forever. It's going to be revealed what it is. Sooner or later. That is a while of that evil wisdom of Satan. Imitation children of God mixed in. Mixed in with the true children of God in order to nullify. The workers are represented as coming to the owner of the field and telling him what they have found there. And he says, ah, an enemy has done this. An enemy has done this. Brought in the mixture. You know what? We see that right where we are. And I'm sure you do too. That the tares are right in the midst of God's true church. Was it saying the word? That's where the enemy will sit too. In the sides of the north of the congregation. He'll be right there, won't he? We need to discern because the tares will be nullifying. Look at the fruit. You know, you can look at the fruit of someone's life 
And we see it right here where we are. What's the fruit? What is the fruit of these people coming in amongst the congregation? What is the fruit of it? Well, what we have seen the fruit of it is, is death. Just a disease. Just like a moldiness. An oldness. Nothing new, nothing fresh. You can tell. The wheat from the tares. And the destruction that they, they do. In the midst of the congregation. And they say, what would you have us do? Shall we pluck up this other thing? He replies, no. Let the sovereignty have its way. Let them both grow together, and the sovereignty, the rule of heaven, will progressively make very clear which is which. That's got to be known. Got to be seen. You're going to know sooner or later. Hey, yeah, a tear can play the game very well. Can talk the talk very well. But there's something not the same as the wheat. The foundation is not there. The realness, the right spirit is not there. It's not the same as the wheat. Let them both grow together, and the sovereignty, the rule of heaven, will progressively make very clear which is which, which is what God is doing. He's making it clear in this hour. The sovereign rule will make manifest what is of itself, what's of God, and what is otherwise. Only the sovereign rule of God can bring out into clearness what is of God. But that will happen as we go on. We can trust the sovereign rule. That is very practical. It works like this. There are those who are truly of God, of heaven, and then there are those who come in who perhaps sing the hymns, use the phraseology, carry on the same way, associate with those of the kingdom, but there is a difference. Deep down, they are really not of us. They are just imitations. They are not real, not the genuine thing. You know, you notice John had talked this morning about the same mind. True Christians have the same mind. You know, maybe the Lord will tell one something in a revelation. He'll show them something. And then here comes another true part of the body and says the same exact thing. As God showed this other part of the body, the true body. It's the same mind. He's showing us the same things. The true body is not one that has all this mesh brain kind of deal going on. We can tell you from experience, you get around that. And you can get affected like you feel like you have a mesh brain or something. Like confusion or whatever. And you're like, man, where is this coming from? And then the Lord shows you. It's coming from over here. Ultimately from the devil, but the vessels over here it's coming from. See? We need to discern because the Lord gives us what? A sound mind. Sound mind. 
So if we're getting anything else going on from there, we know that's not of God, right? So we have to kind of backtrack and, and find out. Say, Lord, show me. Why is this happening? And then he does show you. You've been in this situation with this person or this situation with this other person. And you can tell God is showing you, hey, come out of her, my people. And we better really do that faithfully in this hour. Deep down, they are really not of us. They are just imitations. They are not real, not the genuine thing. We may discern, as these men discerned, that there is something here that is not the same thing, something that is foreign, that is alien and strange. And you know what? That's what the Spirit of God does. You'll get like red flags. You'll get that discernment. You'll know something is not right. You get an uneasiness in your spirit. You know, something is not right. Yeah, I can hear what they're saying, but somehow it just doesn't line up. It doesn't line up. There's something wrong here. We need to pay attention to those promptings of the Holy Spirit, those red flags of the Holy Spirit. Okay, well, what are we going to do? Had we better turn them out, tell them to go? No, no. Go on long enough and they will go of themselves. The two things will be self-manifested. And it will be quite easy in the long run. Why? They went out from us, said John, that they might be made manifest that they are all not of us. Let's read that. 1 John 2.19 Well, let's go with 2.18 first. Little children, 1 John 2.18 Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrist, whereby we know that it is the last time. And we know Antichrist is just, it's against Christ. Whatever it is, against Christ, against his ways, against his word. And wow, that is really manifestly going on right now. Where the word is being defiled by these tears. Absolutely defiled. See, you can tell. <laughs> if you have the true spirit of God, you can tell when you're listening to somebody. The spirit of God is going to bear witness in your spirit that that's the truth. But also, if you're listening to something that is not right and not true and a wrong doctrine, the Spirit of God is as well going to bear witness that is not the truth. That is not of me. And don't ignore it. And don't stay there and sit under it when the Lord shows you that. You may get in super duper trouble if you do and end up having some kind of Deaf and dumb spirit affect you if you continue to sit under it after he's shown you that's not a me. He gives us warnings. He tells us, come out of her, my people, for a reason, and that is for our protection. They went out from us. Verse 19, 1 John 2. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out, that they might be made manifest, that they were not all of us. See, sometimes the Lord will let you 
go into certain things to teach you to teach you the falsity of it and then bring you totally out and then therefore you help others to come out you don't he doesn't show you stuff to have you stay in it he shows you things he brings you through things so that you can help others come out You know, because ultimately the true are going to, they're going to remain steadfast in the long run to the Lord. To his gospel, his truths, his ordinances. And they're also going to be faithful with the saints too. Because those who are truly regenerate are born of an incorruptible seed. See, there's a difference in the wheat and the tares. A big difference. And in the long run, it's this right now, it's being manifested right now. The Lord says, you know, let them grow together. And in the end, he's going to bundle them up and burn them. I believe he's in the process of doing that right now. This is a heavenly principle, you see. There is a manifestation. And it is difficult to endure patiently those who you sense have not, as we say, the root of the matter in them, who are just camp followers. But as with the mixed multitude that left Egypt with Israel, time and testing will find them out right there. Time and testing will find them out. So today, let's all ask the Lord for more discernment that we recognize and that we know when we're stepping into a mixed multitude, okay? And that we do as his word tells us to do and come out of her, my people, so that you don't partake of the curses so that you don't partake of the plagues so that you don't partake of the diseases hey that's a warning and why because he loves us he loves us and he doesn't want us to be harmed but hey if we ignore that warning then consequences follow reaping what's been sowed that's the way it is so today, let's take this admonition. And Lord, I do pray that you give your people clearer discernment, Lord. To know and see with spiritual eyes the things you want us to see. In Jesus' name, amen.